Hey, what's up guys? This is Freaky Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about Cinema 4D 2024 Rigid Bodies with Field Forces. Okay, and why would you use Field Forces instead of just turbulence or wind or something else? The answer is you have way more control about the movement of your particles. So for example, if you want to have a beautiful swirl here and another swirl down there into the other direction, then you would use field forces, okay? Of course, you can still combine it with a turbulence to just get a nice mixture of both worlds to just get that extra noise into your movement. But yes, I'm a big fan of field forces. So let's quickly talk about it. Just be sure that you will get the full lesson on my Patreon as always. This one is between 30 and 40 minutes long and I will just dive deeper with you into it. But of course here on YouTube, I also want to give you some of the knowledge. So I would say let's just fire up Cinema 4D and have some fun, okay? And you can see that I just fired up one of my free files that I share on my Patreon if you are in the Knights tier membership. And for example, you can download these 100 elements there. And I would say for now, we just select a couple of these ones. But of course you can just create your own elements and uh, this is totally up to you. So maybe I will just go with these ones and maybe I also want to select this one. All right, I click edit, copy, go into a new file, edit, paste. And there I have all my files, all right, but I just don't want to have them spread out like this. So I will just select all of these little arrows here and right click on them to center them in the world axis. I will press T to just scale this down a little bit because I think in comparison to a cube, they are quite huge. So still they can be scaled down just a little bit more to something like this one. I like it. And maybe if you just want to line these ones up, you could put them into a cloner. Let's do it like this. And I think I have six elements here. So I could put this one to linear, put this one to six, and then I will just spread them out like this one. Press C to make this one editable. Now I have these ones lined up here. All right, and I want to press NB to see these objects and you can see they come quite in a high res mode here. And I would say you will get away by doing it like this. Just put it into a clone or put a rigid body tag on it and simulate it. But I think we can just optimize this one a little bit. I will hold down Alt to put all of these ones into a remesher. And then I put this one, for example, to 10%. All right, now just wait for the calculation down there. And when this is done, you should get an element which has only 10% of the resolution of your original elements. You can see that this one is looking already way better. Press C to make this one editable. And I would say this would be our elements. Still, when you zoom out, you can see they are quite dense. All right. But it is only a tenth of what it was originally. So I would say this is totally fine. Maybe you can try to optimize your elements even more. Then probably you will get an even faster simulation. But my feeling is that it is not that important like it was previously in Cinema 4D. All right, NA to get rid of the lines. And now I just want to get a couple of clones here. Let's just do it like this, for example. And maybe we want to put them into a box here. Let's just create like a little cube around it. All right, I just eyeball that stuff. Okay, and I think it will help the simulation when I press NB to give this one quite a good subdivision here. At least my understanding is that this will help especially rigid body simulations. All right, so I just want to make this reasonably dense. I will press C to make this one editable. Go to poly mode and now I want to get rid of the top piece, but I don't want to select it like this one. That would be just stupid. So you could go to a font break selection, select the top piece and kill this one. Now you are good. NA to get rid of the lines. And I think I also want to get rid of all of that crap here. You don't need to see that stuff. So now we have like these clones inside of this box here. And I think I just want to create a material here, put it onto my clones to just make my scene here for you guys just a bit more friendly. Let's put it maybe onto something yellowish or something like that. So I think that's nice. Or you know what, let me just create like three materials here just to make this a little bit more pleasing to the eye for you guys. So I just want to put these materials onto my elements there. All right, something like this one. Now we have at least three different colors, okay. 
And I don't say that this is super exciting now because of free materials, but just a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I will put this one to random. Now we have these number of random clones and now we want to turn these ones into a rigid body simulation. Let's do it like this and our cardboard around it. This one should be a collider. Just be sure that you will set the collider to back because we want to have the collisions in the inside. All right. And now hopefully when I would simulate this, we get a reasonably fast simulation here. All right. And something happens that is a little bit unexpected. But of course, when you have two of these columns on top of each other, you will build something like a Greek ancient architecture here. Okay, so that is not intended. So I would say you just go to the cloner, MoGraph, go to random and we don't want to randomize the position, but we want to randomize the rotation. Do it like this. Let's simulate this one more time. And you can see we get a couple of clones here. All right, I guess that we can just make this one a little bit more interesting when we put like 10 rows of clones on top of each other. Let's move this one up here and let me simulate this one more time. Hopefully this will still match into our box here. Okay, let me see this one. I need to have more frames there. Let's continue the simulation. All right, and we have a couple of clones here, like a really simple rigid body simulation, but now we want to work with field forces. Okay, all right. And just to give you a super simple example, we could go to the top view and now let's draw a simple spline here let me try something like this one and you can see this spline is totally ugly but when you click on it and turn this one into a b spline press ma to get the magnet tool now you can just move this one around a little bit all right let me do it like this okay and i would say that this one is my spline and that i want to use with the field force to move around my particles here okay therefore you will fire up a field force put the spline into the object mode put this one to 50 for example now let's blow up this box here of the display just to see this one better and you can see some vectors arrive in your scene let's put this one to 50 just to see these vectors a little bit better and i will just click on the spline put this one to 100 okay that's good i will go back to display and i will just blow this up just a little bit more now you can see that these arrows are everywhere in the scene and they will follow the spline okay so this is what you want to do here you don't need to see this any longer and you can put this one now to 200 for example and hopefully now when we run our simulation one more time you can see that our particles will fall into the scene okay some will not land in our box that is a little bit annoying but you can already see that we get some beautiful movement around our spline and i think that you should just fire this one up a little bit more put this one to 500 all right and probably now you will get more movement here around your spline and this is just the beginning of what you can do with field forces you can see this one is just a bit more art directed and pleasing to the eye but it is the same technique with drawing a spline and using this in the field force to art directed direction of your particle Okay, so that was just a little short version of the full training on Patreon. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.